Hello, I'm thinking we're on. Welcome, welcome to uh, Worship Itself Church here in the virtual age. Uh, it's Palm Sunday and uh, we welcome you to worship this Palm Sunday. You see Sally put some palms up back there, a little celebrative atmosphere. And thank you to Betty Hart who uh, got uh, some palms and put them at the church out on the steps to uh, recognize the day and uh, beautify the front of the church. No matter who you are or where you are in life's journey, you're welcome here with us at, at South Church. Got some announcements. And as you might imagine, the announcements serve two purposes. That is, number one, to let you know what's going on. And number two, so that the people who are getting to church late, even in their own homes, uh, can have a little time. Just a little joke about some of you who posted on Facebook last week. Uh, next Sunday is Easter, and you can purchase uh, flowers and lilies to beautify the front steps of the church as a symbol of the resurrection. And you can dedicate them to uh, loved ones which we will post on Facebook. Uh, the prices and the arrangements will be sent out tomorrow uh, in an email blast to everyone. So uh, respond to that as soon as you can. And uh, thanks to Kathy and John Morgan for uh, putting that together for us. Remember that we're still collecting this week for uh, the one great hour of sharing and effort in the UCC to help people in the world who are in need, I uh, write a check to South Church, uh, put your amount on it, and um, in the subject line, put one great hour of sharing and send it to the church office. We are grateful for that. Our storytelling group uh, will be meeting on Tuesday. You'll be getting an email from me. We'll be meeting on Zoom, and I'll give you the link uh, Tuesday at 7 o'clock. If there are others who want to participate in that group, um, email me or call me and I'll send the loop, the link uh, to you as well. Uh, we have a Bible study at 1 on Thursday. That link will go out. And our bells meet on Wednesday evening and a link will go out for that. And our choir meets on Thursday evening as well. And Sandra runs a, uh, a little chat on uh, Friday at noon. All those links will come out uh, via our email blast. On Monday, Thursday at 7, we will have our uh, traditional uh, service with uh, readings and song. Um, we won't be having communion today, which we usually do on um the first Sunday of the month, uh, but we will be sharing communion on Monday, Thursday, and uh, you'll get uh, an email about that. I want, uh, want you to remember that uh, following the service here today, that uh, there is a postlude provided by Norman, which will be in the comment box, somewhere in a comment box below this on Facebook. And I also want you to remember that uh, I'll be down at the church ringing the bells at 12 uh, today. If you want to grab a bell and step out on your porch and ring a bell for two minutes in uh, sol solidarity together in this uh, time of pandemic. And now, as is our tradition, I invite you to take a moment with me and put your hand on your heart and close your eyes and we'll take three deep breaths together. Thank you. 
our centering words today. Humility is not thinking less of yourself, but thinking of yourself less. I've been thinking about Eunice, and she has consented to be with us again here. Hi, Denny. Hey, Eunice. Good to see you. Glad to have you here on Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday? What's that? Is that something to do with your hands? No. Like a high five, maybe. Give me five. Give me five. No, 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 no. It has nothing to do with your hands. Palm Sunday has to do with uh, palms, you know, branches from palm trees, like those that are back there. Oh, yeah. Those are very nice. Very nice. Good job, Sally. Good job. Yes, I thought so, too. They're very, very sweet. And when Jesus was coming to Jerusalem for a holiday, Passover, a holiday! Well, that sounds like fun. Well, it is. It's, it's a holy day, actually. And Jesus was coming with many, many people to the city to celebrate that holiday because they're celebrating how God had freed them in the past. Oh, that sounds like a great holiday. And then when Jesus was coming up the road, all kinds of his followers joined in and they shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna. And they laid their cloaks on the road and they uh, took palm branches from the trees and they laid it down to make like a little red carpet for him. Oh, but it wasn't red, was it? It was like green because they were palms. Yeah, that's right. It wasn't red, but you know, it was a welcoming thing that they were honoring him with. Oh, that's great. If we'd been there, me and my friends from Kaleidoscope Corner, I mean, we'd be in that crowd too. We'd be shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna. Yes, yes, I, I think that's right. You would because Jesus is our leader and we would want to follow him too into the city. Yes, yes, that would be great, wouldn't it? But my friends, I haven't seen them for a while. My Kaleidoscope Corner friends, I felt kind of blue about that. Well, I'll bet you have. Yeah, you know, I miss them a lot. So I wrote a little song for them. Well, really, it's for me, because it's a blues song. And I feel blue. Really? Would you sing it for us? Yeah, I would, but I need a little groove, you know. What do you mean, a groove? Well, you know, a, a beat. Can you help me? Can you try that? Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure. Oh, come on. Get a little cool, Denny. Get a little cool in you. Cool? What do you mean by cool? You know, sick, dope, shibby, divya, kickin'. Cool. Cool. Okay. How about, uh... Like this. boo doo 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 boo doo 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 Tyler, 
do 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 Gilbert and me do 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 I'll see you with Tegan do 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 here in my cave do 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 got the blues I got the blues kaleidoscope corner I'm blowing my horner blues do 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 guy you did pretty good well thank you and that was a very nice song now I think it's time to say goodbye all right goodbye goodbye I still got the blues I hope you're doing good we'll see you soon all right bye 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 Oh my goodness. She's too much. Uh, now we have our time of our prayers. We have uh, several requests uh, today. Uh, I asked to play, pray for the family of uh, Paul and Lorraine Dewey is our good friend Paul and longtime member of the church died just a few days ago. We ask for prayers for comfort for Lorraine and for their family as they grieve his passing. And a large prayer of thanksgiving for his presence in our church. For many years he uh, was in charge of the uh, building and grounds, and he was uh, held many dif different offices in the church. Uh, he's one of those people who are the salt of the earth, who uh, you don't know that they've done all kinds of things that have enabled everything else to work. Uh, prayers for Jill Quast and her family uh, in the wake of the death of her father, Joe Radcliffe, who is 93 years young. And prayers for Ginger and Sean Bendig, uh, past members of our church who have moved to Vermont. Sean is in the hospital with all the symptoms of COVID-19, but hasn't uh, gotten uh, official results back from testing yet. We continue to carry Wes and Judy Goodwin in our prayers in the wake of the death of their son, Rob. We pray for Jess Atkinson's mom, who went through chemo this week and has to be a, has to go through it alone. Uh, a prayer of thanksgiving. Our own Sandra Fisher successfully defended her doctoral research this past week. We give thanks for her work, which has been around uh, church collaboration and merger, because it's been very helpful in our conversation uh, with First Church. And of course, uh, we pray for medical and service staff of those who are caring for the COVID-19 and caring for the elderly. Both uh, Linda Sueto's daughter and Deb Joyce's daughter uh, work in those capacity and, and we uh, hold them in our prayers. For a friend of Deb Joyce, uh, Jen, who suffered a stroke this past week and lost her speech. For Linda Bolu's sister, who is in rehab after a hospital stay. And for the healing of our beautiful planet and all who dwell on it, we give thanks. Would you join me in prayer? We must admit, oh God, in the face of the COVID-19 virus, we are humbled. Something so small from the animal kingdom is able to make its presence known in ways that have been beyond our imagination. Forgive us, God, for we have mistaken our size, our intelligence, our technology, our wealth, as to be so powerful as to make us superior to the ways of nature. But now we see that our perceptions were false. Forgive us 
For those perceptions have cost many people their lives, particularly the elderly, the feeble, and the poor. We give thanks for their lives and pray comfort for their families in grief. Forgive us for our misperceptions have put first responders in harm's way as well and brought deep anxiety upon their spouses, parents, and children. We thank you for the courage they have to fulfill their call. Console the families of those first responders who have lost their lives. Now that nature has our attention, O oh God, might we see ourselves as guests in their home, the home of redwoods and germs, oceans and microbes, elephants and mosquitoes, this planet Earth. Might we consider our place in your creation, O oh God, as brother to the sky and sister to the soil. We give you thanks for the minds of scientists around the world who are working together to find a vaccine and medications for COVID-19. Might their work bear fruit and might their work inspire the rest of the planet, nations, religions, tribes, and political parties to work together for the common good. We join to this prayer, the prayer that Jesus taught us saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We'll switch up in the order here. I'm going to read <clears throat> our scripture text to you uh, next. It's from the book of Matthew, chapter 21, 1 through 11. As we hear the words of scripture, let us listen in the words for the word of God. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophets, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large, large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? And the crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of God shall stand forever. <clears throat> well, I'm going to sing a song for you. It's a song. Someone actually uh, requested it which was very nice. Um, it's a song that I wrote for uh, Heads Up Hartford, which is that urban suburban camp I started 16 years ago now. And um, so it has a 
bit of a campy feel to it. We've done it once or twice in church. Uh, I haven't done it uh, as a solo, so we'll see how it goes. When you see love shining a light from someone's face, you know that God is near when disappointment by kindness and care has just been erased. You know that God is near when the world makes colors appear from black and white. You know that God is near when inspiration surprises your heart and opens your eyes. offers to help a stranger to cope. You know that God is near when resurrection transposes and turns despair into hope. You know that God is near. The wind blows through the forest a force she cannot see. But for the branches chorus and the dancing of the leaves when I see power stooping to help the powerless rise, you know that God is near. When motivation reverses away from self-centered pride, you know that God is near. You know that God is near. You know that God is near. You know that God is. figure if, if Jimmy Fallon can uh, read his um, monologue and I can uh, I can just sit here with my sermon on my lap and read it to you. I can remember uh, seeing some pirate movie on TV after school when I was in junior high. I believe that Errol Flynn was the star and there was a lot of swashbuckling on ships and fighting and cannons firing off and, and then at some point the ship starts to sink and the captain shouts, every man for himself. That's what people tend to do when they think the ship is sinking. We're in tough times now. We're watching the numbers go up on the screen. Neighbors, family, co-workers, friends, all seem to be close to a health care provider or a victim of COVID-19. Shortages, jobs lost, economic future uncertain. It feels like the ship is sinking. And there's a part of us that wants to shout, everyone for themselves. You know, the chapter before the, the Palm Sunday story in Matthew, in that chapter, the mother of James and John, they're the sons of Zebedee, comes to Jesus and she asks that her sons might sit on the right and the left hand of Jesus when he comes into his kingdom. Now that's not every man for themselves, but that's every mother for her sons. Jesus responds, uh, loosely translated, saying, that decision is above my pay grade. And the other disciples, they're ticked off because of the power play by the Zebedee family. And, and Jesus says to the, them all, if you want to be great, you've got to be a servant. And then, here in this next chapter, he plays out symbolically what that means in this Palm Sunday story. Matthew quotes the Hebrew prophet 
Zechariah when he says, your king comes to you humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, on the foal of a donkey. And then a verse later, it says, they brought the donkey and the colt and they put their cloaks on them and he sat on them. Jesus sitting on a donkey and a colt creates quite uh, an odd picture. Scholars argue about why this in, incongruous image is here, but let's just suffice it to say that there is something of a seeming contradiction, a king who is humble. In the ancient world, kings are qualitatively different than their subject. Caesar was considered a god. He had military power and wealth. Peasants died at his decision, often for his own ego and nothing else. But here in Jesus is a humble king. Humility is related to that word humus, soil, earth. When I was young, I used to think that humility meant never outshining anyone else, never speaking up, never getting yourself noticed in any way. But I have come to see that this is not so. For in the next story after Palm Sunday, Jesus goes into the temple and turns over the tables there. So he certainly stepped up and made a statement. Humility does not make a lesser assessment of ourselves and a greater assessment of others. Rather, humility takes an honest look at who we are ourselves and then an honest look at to whom it is we belong. It's like the quote from C.S. Lewis. Humility is not thinking less of ourselves, but thinking of ourselves less. Jesus took a an honest look at himself when he spoke with the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When she, when she asked the questions about her son, could they sit on the right and left hand of the throne? Who will sit there? I read Jesus' answer as, thrones? Who said anything about thrones? A, the answer is above his prey grade. He doesn't know, you see. He knows his limits. He sees himself honestly, which is the doorway to humility. And not only for Jesus, but for us too. Rachel Naomi Raymond, a medical doctor and therapist, tells of working with a second year medical student whose name was Vera. In her second year of medical school, in a lab session, the professor passed around preserved human sp organ specimens with specific birth defects that the rubber gloved students inspected in order to learn something about them. One of these specimens was a malformed heart and casually, the professor, professor mentioned that this was the heart of the student in their class who had died the past year. They all knew this student. There had been no service for him at the medical school. His body had been sent home to his parents as soon as possible. Vera, who knew him well, her insides were twisted into turmoil. She looked out of the corner of her eye at the other students, only to see faces of clinical detachment. And then she realized that her own face wore that same blank look. And at first, she congratulated herself. I have the stuff it takes to be a doctor. I can maintain clinical distance. But this experience so twisted Vera's insides that she had to make an appointment with Rachel, the therapist. And after telling Rachel 
this story. Vera sat on the couch and she rocked back and forth and slowly began to weep and weep and weep, which was the beginning of her healing. This is the problem with being dishonest about who we are. Our insides are twisted by pride, by setting ourselves above others, even if the purpose is to serve them through clinical distance. Rachel Naomi Raymond writes, my training encouraged me to be dishonest and hide vital parts of myself in the belief that this would make me better in the service of others. But in the end, I found that abandoning my humanity in order to become of service made me vulnerable to burnout, cynicism, numbness, loneliness, and depression. Abandoning the heart weakens us. When it feels like the ship is sinking, Humility is the door to an honest, clear view of ourselves, including our heart as well as our mind. Secondly, a humble servant is aware that they belong to a larger circle. Jesus has felt this call from that mystery that we call God, and humility recognizes that we are inextricably a part of this larger mystery we call creation, that we know as, as life. We are not something in and of ourselves, ever. This does not mean that we think less of ourselves. It means that we think of ourselves less because we belong to something larger. It is this awareness that motivates Jesus to give sight to the blind, to heal the leper, to bring good news to the poor, to proclaim love and peace and justice on the earth. There is something inherent in nature about the way of humility, about living as part of the whole. You might remember the book, The Once and Future King by T.H. White, about the youth of young King Arthur. As rebel forces storm the royal castle, Arthur is whisked away by Merlin the magician and is given to a good knight, K-N-I-G-H-T, so that that knight might raise him. Merlin, who alone knows Arthur's identity, trains him with his magic by turning him into different animals from whom Arthur learns the lessons of nature's wisdom from the animals themselves as the animals befriend him. Arthur, then as he grows older, is pressed into service as a squire of the knight's older son, Kay, who is also training to become a knight. And at Kay's first tournament, Kay realizes that he has forgotten his sword. And so in a panic, he sends Arthur off looking for one. And Arthur runs in the town and he chases around until he finds a square in which there is a sword that is thrust into a stone. And into his hurry, in his hurry, he doesn't notice the words that are written on the sword. Whosoever pulls this sword from this stone is rightfully born the King of England. He reaches to the hilt to pull it out of the stone, but it is stuck. And he hesitates and steps back. And as he does, he hears a scampering of feet, a rustling of wings, a squeaking, a growling, a chirping, and a baying and he turns around and looks, and there behind him are all the animals who had shared nature's wisdom with him in his training. They have all appeared and strengthened 
by their friendship, by their love, and by their teaching. He takes hold of the hilt and he pulls, and the sword comes out like butter. Being honest about who he is, a simple squire, in service to something larger, not only to the kingdom you see, but to the animals of God's creation. All of this creates the heart of a humble king. And a similar reference is made in Luke's telling of the Palm Sunday story. For in his telling, the religious leaders stop Jesus and they say to him that he must stop the crowd from shouting Hosanna, that he is the king. And Jesus says to the religious leader, if I shut them up, the stones themselves will shout. You see, nature deeply is aware of the way of humility. Of course, King Arthur's story isn't done here. There is much danger and suffering in front of him. And so it is with Jesus on Palm Sunday. His story does not end with a parade into Jerusalem. There is much danger and suffering ahead for him as well. And there is danger and suffering ahead for us. But friends, even though it feels like the ship might be sinking, every man for himself is not the way. Humility is the way. And humility is not thinking less of ourselves, but thinking of ourselves less, like Jesus. Why? Because thinking of ourselves less brings us to an honest assessment of ourselves, where we see our need for others. In our need for others, we notice the circle of belonging, our belonging to our family, yes, but also to our neighbor, our belonging to our nation, yes, but also to other nations, our belonging to every person on the planet, yes, but also to the plants and the animals, the seas, the sky, the mountains, and the plains. Like scientists all over the globe are humbly working together to create a vaccine, we will make our way to the other side of this pandemic. For we think of ourselves as individuals less, and we think of our place in the circle of God's belonging more. Amen and amen. Remember, my friends, you can hear Norman play a postlude, scrolling down to a comment box. And uh, remember as well that I'm going to be ringing the bells at the church at noon. Uh, if you want to ring a bell, step outside on your porch. In solidarity, we can proclaim our wider belonging in the love of God. And now would you say with me our uh, benediction. Go forth into the world and serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God. Rejoicing through the power of the Holy Spirit. The grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And all of God's people said, Amen.